Welcome to the Supernatural with Laura Maxwell on Eternal Radio. In these programs, we will hear the true supernatural accounts from those who trust various spiritualities. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Today we have Rachel Kelly from Indiana. Rachel was a Reiki master and she also taught Reiki and she was into different esoteric things and things of the new age. So let's introduce Rachel now to the show. Hi Rachel, how are you? Hi, good morning, very good. And you? I'm good too, thanks. And I'm trying not to giggle because we're on Skype and the photograph is one of your cat, <laughs> and he's just gorgeous, but he looks like he's staring right into my face. <laughs> oh, he's so cute. <laughs> and you, you, your surname's Kelly, so um, there's an Irish link there, I imagine. Yes, that's my husband. Um, he has Irish roots, blonde hair, or excuse me, red hair, blue eyes, and has that Irish spark to him. <laughs> <laughs> That's lovely. So um, let's get started then. Tell us first, you know, where did your spirituality start? Um, were your parents interested in spiritual things? Well, that really is where it all began, Laura. Um, mostly with my my mother. She tends to be uh, the spiritual leader in the family. And... Um, when I was about five, we started going to a, a Lutheran church, and um, I was in a Lutheran grade school for all the way through um, until eighth grade. My parents were very active in the church. They were deacons and ushers, and my mom was head of the PTL at the school, and I uh, went to religion class every day. You know, we went to chapel every week. And I was in church every Sunday. So um, I was very, very steeped in Christianity. Um, and it was all, you know, very religious. And I always believed it to be true. Mm -hmm. However, um, can I, it was definitely... Can I ask yeah. you something there, Rachel, yeah. right at the start? Mm -hmm. I'm so sorry for interrupting. Oh, may, you're fine. You know, there may be some people listening that say, well, what do you mean by religious? And, and when you say church, was it, can I say, uh, church wherein it was just um, a lot of teaching but not a real relationship with Jesus, as it were? Could you explain that for us? Yes, Laura, you actually nailed that right on the head. Mm -hmm. um, like at, at my home, you know, we would pray before supper, but there was, uh, it was like uh, very superficial mm -hmm. um, to me. Uh, there was a lot of emotional difficulty um, in the atmosphere in my home growing up. We were very poor and I have a younger sister that was always ill and a lot of trouble and um, things like that. There was there was no real joy um, that I recall. I'm sure we had, you know, good moments. But when I think back on my childhood, I mostly think of, of difficulty. And as far as the church we went to, it was um, a Lutheran church. So it was what you would call high church. It was very ceremonial. They would wear the robes mm -hmm. and there was a lot of ritual to it. Mm -hmm. um, almost had like a, a Catholic kind of flavor to it. Mm -hmm. And I did receive a very good foundation of what the Bible teaches while I was there, mm -hmm. but I never understood about a relationship with the Lord. Um, it was about knowing the truth and believing it to be true mm -hmm. rather than a, a living, true relationship with God, basically. I mean, to mm -hmm. me, God was always far away. Yeah. Um, yeah. He wasn't someone that was right there with me. Mm -hmm. And although I believed the Bible to be true, like I said, it was, it was all very far away to me. It was somewhere out there, up there 
over there. It wasn't in me, so to speak. I wasn't part of the story, I guess, is a good way of putting it. And really, I think that a lot of people can identify with that. And, and that's why I think that they get turned off Jesus, really. Um, and if you don't really know Jesus that intimate way, then really you just don't have him at all. No. And then you're just mm -hmm. striving for something that's really rather empty. Of course. Yes. Yes. So please, please, so, please continue where, where you were at. Sure. Um, okay. So yeah, it was, it was very, um, those were some difficult years. And like I said, we were really poor and my dad, um, started going to college and he worked full time and went to school full time. So I didn't see him too much. And when he was home, he was kind of in a bad mood, you know, cause he was always tired and things like that. And he actually had gotten a, a job as a, a janitor at the, at the school and the church. And, um, I don't know, it was around, oh gosh, maybe sixth grade where, you know, how kids are, they get mean mm -hmm. and they kind of form into groups and clicks and things and and kids will start to pick on each other and I started to have a very very rough time there um there was one girl in particular that really tried to make my life miserable and boy did she succeed mm. um so it was around this time that I really started getting this idea in my head that I wanted to be a rebel mm. and by seventh grade, I was into heavy metal music and um, I shaved my head and just started really acting out. And um, looking back, I now know that this was around the time that my mom had started to ask questions about her own faith. Mm -hmm. um, in hindsight, I can see that my wandering away directly correlated with the timing of her. Um, by the time I was confirmed, that's something they do in the Lutheran church where you like go through this ceremony where you basically confirm, yes, I believe in Jesus. Um, and then I was done at that school. We quit going to church there once I graduated um, from school. So I went to a Lutheran high school for my first two years in high school before my parents moved and we transferred, um, I transferred to a public school. Uh -huh. And it was at this time that I started getting into drugs. I got arrested for shoplifting. I got drunk for the first time. I was basically just, you know, sinking further and further into rebellion. Mm -hmm. I was really drawn to dark things. Um, I loved, you know, the heavy metal music and I just was was growing very angry um, at everything and disillusioned with life. And I remember telling my friend that I was going to try every drug out there. I couldn't wait to, you know, party and do all these things. And I just couldn't wait to move away from my parents and just do everything I, I wanted to do. So... When I turned 19, Laura, I did just that. I, I met a man that um, was nine years older than me. He uh, had, was very connected. You know, he was a grown up and had his own house. And well, he was a drug dealer and a partier. And he was a musician and really worldly and had all these connections. And when I met him, I wasn't even really attracted to him, but I knew that he had what I needed as far as access to drugs and partying and all these different things. Mm -hmm. So I moved in with him and, you know, it's amazing. He told me that he would be mean to me. He told me that he would treat me badly. Mm -hmm. And I remember thinking, well, he's obviously been hurt and mm -hmm. I can fix, I can fix him. You know, oh I will gosh. love him. Oh. And he'll be okay. And he'll be nice to me. And yeah, right. Um, oh I, I had moved in with the devil himself. I mean, mm -hmm. I spent 10 years with this man. And I cannot even begin to tell you the abuse that I suffered living mm -hmm. in this home. Mm -hmm. um, 
I mean, he even beat up his dog. I mean, oh, no. he was just a horrible, horrible person. But he would tell me he loved me. You know, there was a lot of uh, cognitive dissonance in that house. Sure. And so obviously I quickly became a drug addict and an alcoholic. And, um, you know, I, I, I was bad, Laura. I would wake up in the morning and and get sick. I would still have alcohol in my system and I would go to work and then I would come home and do it all over again. And I was just steeped in this life of partying and drugs. And you know what? I didn't like it. I, I hated it. I, I was trapped and I knew it. Mm -hmm. And it was about five years into that relationship that I really started to want out. But I had no vision of where I would go. I had nothing to grab onto. And as an addict and a drunk, I had no capacity to do anything to help myself. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting because this man called himself a Christian and he would go to church once a month. And he would always save his little bulletins from church. And he considered himself very religious because he would do that. Mm -hmm. And by that point, excuse me, I was very scornful of the whole thing. Sure. Because how could a Christian be so mean and horrible? I mean, he was just awful. Mm -hmm. And... So do you so, think he was a real Christian? Do you think he really did have Jesus in his heart? Or was it absolutely just... Absolutely not. Yeah, I was going to say just in, in yeah. name only. Yeah. In name only. I think he had no clue mm -hmm. what being a Christian really meant. Um, mm -hmm. I think that there is a, a big fallacy out there where people will say, well, as long as you believe this to be true, you are a Christian. Mm -hmm rather than actually encountering God and getting to know him and him coming into you and, and changing you. Anyone that has Jesus in their heart is going to love others. And mm -hmm. yeah, we don't become perfect immediately, but you're certainly not going to, to do the things on a regular basis that sure. this person did. Sure. So um, by the time I was 30, I was just completely hopelessly miserable. I, I did not know what to do. And I just, I started praying that I could be free. Mm -hmm. And it's not that I ever quit believing that God existed or anything like that. I never really lost my beliefs. I had just, you know, kind of become disillusioned with maybe church, you know? So anyway, um, all during these years, while I was getting drunk and getting high and being miserable, my mom was walking further and further away from Christianity. And she, it's interesting, Laura, she had started this by asking questions. There were some things about the faith that were bothering her and she couldn't understand so she went to the pastors of the church and started asking questions. Mm -hmm. And the answers that they gave her were either bad or she just didn't like them or, or whatever. Mm -hmm. But she started reading books. Um, she got into David Icke and uh, William Cooper, things that talk about uh, conspiracy theories and... Um, David Icke actually talks about how we're descended from these beings called the Anunnaki mm -hmm. and um, we were created by lizards to be slaves and just all these things. And that Christianity is just part of this system that was designed to keep people enslaved and under control. And that was the beginning of it for her. And by the time I turned about 30 years old, she had gotten into new age. Um, she told me that new age was actually part of her bloodline. Mm -hmm. Um, that she comes from, she would say, uh, a long line of witches is mm -hmm. how she put it to me. And she was actually very proud of this heritage and mm -hmm. really embraced, um, 
this new thing. Can you define? And, sorry, Rachel. Could you? You're perhaps, fine. Could you perhaps define um, what new age is? Because sometimes people, you know, there's people that aren't always sure what it actually means. Can you give us your uh, definition of it? Sure. I suppose I would say that new age is a collection of beliefs and practices that stem from Eastern religions. Mm -hmm. um, believing that God is like a, a force and an energy mm -hmm. rather than a person. Mm -hmm. And that we can all achieve this through enlightenment and opening our minds and communicating with spirits and that they can help us mm -hmm. um, raise our vibration and our energy so that we evolve better. Mm -hmm. um, there's different, you know, sex and practices and things, but I would say collectively, mm -hmm. that would be as, as near as I can kind of put my finger on it without thinking about it too much. <laughs> and that's a good definition because it's such a wide, wide range of, of spiritual beliefs in actual fact. Um, sometimes they, they, they blend and sometimes there's crossover. But like you mentioned a minute ago, you know, even witches, whatever, um, do kind of a c c come into this, this type of of thinking and I think a lot of people are actually doing new age things or, or have new age beliefs and yet they wouldn't even recognize that as being new age as such I've certainly met a lot of folks like that who will say to me oh gosh I actually believe in new age things <laughs> and you know they, yes. they hadn't even labeled themselves as that not that labels are a good thing but you know um so it's really interesting to, to get your definition of it please, please go on Oh, sure. Yeah. Well, just one more thing there, Laura. It's interesting because I've actually seen new age coming into the Christian church and people don't understand that that's where it comes from. Totally. But that's another story. Okay. Mm -hmm. So um, fast forward. Yes. My mom is going to this new age center. And at this particular place, they would do things like meditation and they would burn sage and listen to this music and they were into crystals and um, all these things that I had never seen or heard of before. And she invited me to um, check them out with her and she didn't really explain what it was about. She just said, Hey, I've been going to this really cool place. Come see it. It was around my birthday. Um, and she wanted to give me a gift certificate to go there. And I was like, sure, whatever. So I went there and, um, oh gosh, without getting into too many details, there was a man, it was a man and a woman that ran this place and they were, they were not married, but they were a couple. And the man was a Reiki master mm -hmm. and Reiki is a form of channeling energy through your body to bring about healing and things like that and the first time I saw this man it was like it was like I was under a spell um I just felt like this wave hit me the first time he looked at me and it was like I was captured or something I just I I wanted to be near him and I didn't want to be away from him and I wanted what he had. And I was just so drawn to all of this. And, you know, I was coming from, you know, my dirty house and my mean boyfriend and my heavy metal music. And I walked into this atmosphere of just magic. It was, it was beautiful to me, Laura, this ambient music and just the atmosphere and everything just felt so good to me. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it felt very positive and healing and uplifting. And I was very intrigued with everything. And uh, so they arranged for um, the man to do a Reiki healing on me. And I went to their, their house and I laid on a, a table, like a massage table. And he put on this beautiful music and dimmed the lights. It was almost dark in there. And he started at my head and worked his way down to my feet and um, was 
putting this energy through my body. Mm -hmm. And it was real. I had never felt anything like it. It almost felt like electricity, but it didn't hurt. Uh And I could feel it like pulsing through my body. And I remember in my head, I was just screaming for them to help me, to help me, help me get out of my life where I'm at. Mm -hmm. And So the healing ended and I went home and I was sick for three days on the couch. I could not get up. And after that, I got up and the voices in my head that had been making me drink were gone. And I felt, I felt completely different. I was free. Mm -hmm. I was absolutely free of the desire to smoke, to drink to be in my home anymore and to be anywhere near this man that I had been living with. Mm -hmm. It was like, I all of a sudden just saw it all as disgusting, which I did before, but it was like, I, it took it to a new level. Mm -hmm. And I, 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 I knew that I was going to leave. And, you know, it's interesting. I, I look back now and I can see the Lord's hand in all of it. Um, but basically it was facilitated for me to pretty much sneak out the back door of where I had been living. And I moved into a secured apartment building and, you know, the man I'd been living with, he continued to stalk me for a long time, but because of where I lived, he couldn't get to me. Mm -hmm. And I was, I was safe for the first time. And, um, you know, it happened before he, he didn't know what had hit him. So all of a sudden I'm sober, I'm free, and I thought I had found God. Mm -hmm. Um, I took classes with these people. I became a Reiki master. I was teaching classes. I got into, oh gosh, uh, shamanism. Mm -hmm. I built a copper pyramid in my living room to meditate in. I had all these different spirit guides um, that I would communicate with that would help me with my Reiki healings. They increased my power and my, the energy that I could channel. Mm -hmm. And I used to do healings on all kinds of people. And I began to do new age crafts and make tools for people. I had an eBay store where I would sell these things. I became well known in the local new age community because I would display all my things in local shops. I, I learned crystals very, very, very well. Um, I knew every crystal by name. I had them hanging all over my house. I used to wrap them and make necklaces out of them and sell them on the internet. Um, I got into tarot cards, palmistry. Um, oh gosh, if I thought about it, I'm sure I could name quite a few other things. Um, but anyway, for the sake of time, I, did you do yoga too? No, I actually never got into yoga and have actually just recently researched what yoga really is all about. Mm -hmm. Um, but that was, that was never something that, uh, that was made available to me. Um, I'm mostly focused on the Reiki and the shamanism and the meditation and, uh, divination. Uh And I I felt very enlightened and it was interesting because all these people in this community were very scornful of Christianity, um, seeing it as people that just haven't opened their minds and they, you, they really looked down on people that were Christians because they thought that they were very close minded and and very low on the evolutionary ladder as far as mm-hmm. spiritual growth goes. I used to believe that too when I was one. <laughs> Aha. <laughs> yes, that's all part of it, I suppose. Sure. So at this point, my mom was a full-blown witch. And I would go to her house and we would all do rituals together as a family. My dad had become a new ager. He's a prana healer, which is similar to Reiki. Um, you just don't touch someone like you do with Reiki. And my mom is really into divination and spell work. She taught me how to do spells on people. And um, we would get together on the pagan holidays and do rituals and spells. And she would she would run them and facilitate them. Mm-hmm. And it was interesting because it was it I wasn't very far into all this when I started to get some red flags 
that something just wasn't right. Mm-hmm. Um, first of all, the people that ran the New Age Center that I would go to, it was interesting because they were supposed to be so enlightened, but as soon as meditation was over, they'd run over and turn on their TV because the NASCAR race was on. Or, um, you know, they would eat very bad food like McDonald's. And like the man had pictures of women in bathing suits in his office and just all these things that I would consider like a a low vibration to Mm -hmm. use, you know, new age talk. So that didn't really line up to me. And then when I was at the shop one night, I bought a rock that had a picture. It was like a natural pattern in the rock. And it was like of a um, picture of a deer, like the face of a deer head. And I looked at it, I was like, oh, hello, what's your name? And I clearly heard the word Mara. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, what a pretty name. So Mm -hmm. I bought the crystal and wrapped it in wire and put it around my neck. Mm -hmm. And I looked up the name Mara on the internet. (laughs) It means demon. And I was like, oh, and it just, it kind of scared me. I was like, well, that doesn't seem right. You know, I mean, I don't know, but I kind of forgot about it. It was one rock I had among many hundreds. So it was just part of it. But anyway, um, I guess entwined in this whole story was the fact that I'd been having an affair with my Reiki master. He, um, he had told me that we were together in a past life and that we were going to be together again and we were going to run away to Canada. We were going to have a new age center. Mm -hmm. And so for a year and a half, I hung out with these people and And did he, did he give, sorry for interrupting. Did he give, um, you know, a definition for this? Did he say you were twin flames or soulmates, something like that? Well, no, actually how it happened, I'll explain real quick. Mm -hmm. Um, He gave me a handful of rocks to wrap for him with wire. That was one of the things I did for everybody is I would wrap crystals so they could wear them. And I took them home and he had told me, I put something in there for you. Let's see if you get it. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay. And then I took these rocks home And I sat down with them in my hand and I closed my eyes and just had like this attitude of receiving. I was like, what's in here? And then all of a sudden I just had this powerful thing like hit me where I saw him and I as being these souls that had reincarnated together and we had been together in the past. And it was a very powerful thing. So he didn't actually tell me with words per se Mm -hmm. but I looked it up and yes I read about twin flames and and all these different things so I went to him and said and told him what had happened and he said yeah I was wondering if you'd figure that out or something so he like kind of acknowledged it Mm -hmm. um I now see that it it was a a spell basically Mm -hmm. that I I was put under and it was so powerful. You know, you see people getting put under spells in movies and things and it seems so silly, but it's very, very real. Do you know what happened to my mother? She, when she was a spiritualist and into new age things, she would be given the name of a man by different mediums, different um, channelers. And they said this man would be that twin flame for her. And Uh You know, it was maybe a year or two later she did meet this man. He was involved in the same type of thing. And, you know, he he turned out to be very abusive and an alcoholic and and everything. And it really was really pretty awful. So, again, that was a case of the spirits were really just telling lies. And thankfully it didn't last long, that relationship. Oh, good. Mm -hmm. Yes, they they could be very misleading. Mm -hmm. Um. For the sake of time, I can't really get into all of it, but I had lots of things like that happening to me where it was all quite real. There were obviously spirits in my home and they would, they would torment me or they would, they would tell me that I needed to do this or that and I would do it and it would end up being a bad thing. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't understand because this had saved me from that horrible life. And Mm -hmm. it's like, well, if this is 
God and I'm really on this evolutionary ladder, why am I tormented? Mm -hmm. Why is this man that is supposed to be so spiritual, so afraid to leave his girlfriend? I mean, it was just there were so many things and I went on a very extreme diet and got really skinny and everyone was worried about me and just all these different things. And, you know, it was almost like I had traded one miserable life for another. It had become as this huge, magical, wonderful, beautiful thing, but it became so much work to evolve my own soul that it became this terrible burden. And none of the people in this community really lived up to what they were teaching me. I had yet to meet someone that met this ideal of, you know, well, you're supposed to be this way and this is what we're all about. And no, it just seemed like a bunch of lost, confused people trying to, to further themselves on this spiritual ladder. Mm -hmm. And they just seemed like regular people to me. And I don't know, I was becoming really disillusioned and I really started to lose that magical feeling that I had had in the beginning. And I'm like, well, I'm not meditating enough. I'm not doing this enough or that enough. And I became convinced that I was preventing my own growth by lack of diligence mm -hmm. um, and things like that. And it became just a lot of work. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was very burdensome. And, uh, you know, in the middle of all this, I still had my ex stalking me and I had to move a bunch of times and I had to change jobs because the job I was at, he would always come there and just, you know, it was, it was a very hard time and it, it's, it was not what it appeared to be in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Um, I thought that things would get better and better and better. And instead they were just getting worse and worse and worse. Mm -hmm. And the thing of it is because of what I was being taught, I thought it was my fault that I was not doing enough or, mm -hmm. you know, whatever. Um, and that's such a typical thing I hear all the time from people that have come out of, of these types of spiritual beliefs and practices that they would get to that stage and think I need to meditate more I need to do more Reiki I need to do more yoga um or whatever it is um yeah and I need to get more powerful spirit guides and so on um and yet yeah things just get worse yes and I I could see that um mm -hmm. it seems really typical and um yeah I sure went through it that's for sure so you know Something amazing happened um, after I had been in this whole thing for about a year and a half, two years, I met my husband, Sean. Mm -hmm. um, I would love to tell the story of all the details of how we got together, but there's just not enough time. But suffice it to say, it was obvious that we had been brought together mm -hmm. through such what you would call coincidental circumstances and it was like this big explosion into my life i i knew that we were going to get married when i shook his hand he was just he was the one mm -hmm. and i knew it uh with every fiber of my being and he was absolutely perfect for me and it was amazing and we just had this amazing meeting. And, um, you know, basically our first date, we're still on it. We were inseparable and, um, he moved in immediately and we, uh, got married right away and began this very <laughs> interesting life together. Now he was, I guess what you would call an ex Christian as well that had gotten into new age. Mm -hmm. He had gone to Bible college in his past and ended up being a social worker instead of a pastor. And I don't know if you about know about social work. It's very liberal and um, not Christian at all mm -hmm. as far as a, a, a knowledge base and a belief system go. Mm -hmm. um, and step by step, although a very, very good social worker, he was being led further and further away from the faith. And so that's how he got led away. Mm -hmm. And then he had gotten into 
new age through it all started with um thomas merton i think he said who is supposedly like a christian writer but has some esoteric beliefs and then it just kind of went from there Mm -hmm. just little baby steps and before he knew it he was fully into new age and so we were both these ex-christians that were you know away from all that and into new age when we got together Mm -hmm. he was excuse me really into alistair crowley I don't know if you know of him yeah, yeah. Um, and tarot cards. Mm-hmm. He did a reading every single day um, on tarot cards. I did a Reiki healing on him and I bought him this meteorite crystal. And, you know, we just kind of blended together what we believe. And I remember, you know, we used to talk about our past and where we came from. And it's interesting, Laura, because we could accept that God was a force and not a person. And we could accept that reincarnation was real. We could accept all these things we had been taught. But where did Jesus fit in? I remember we used Mm -hmm. to talk about that. Mm -hmm. And we never really came to resolve that question. Um, But, you know, life is busy and and things carry on. And um, And did you laugh together? Did you laugh together about... um, you know, the silly Christians that think spirit guides are demons. And did you have conversations? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yes. Mm -hmm. Uh, He and my mother got along very well. And yeah, they they used to talk about, you know, look at the silly Christians who celebrate their pagan holidays. Boy, are they dumb, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah, things like that, you know? And So, um, oh yeah, we were on the evolutionary ladder. I tell you what, weren't we smart? (laughs) (laughs) So, um, we'd been together a couple years when we stumbled across a couple called Esther and Jerry Hicks. Mm -hmm. They are a couple that put out these, uh, CDs that you listen to where they channel this entity that calls itself Abraham. And they acknowledge it's channeling and they acknowledge that it's a a collective entity. It's more than one spirit. And it just, as a group, goes by the name Abraham. And it's all these teachings about life and the universe and everything. And um, I remember the first CD blew my mind. It was about the law of attraction and it was incredible. And I thought it was amazing. And we went out and bought the second set. I couldn't wait to listen to it. It was called the vortex. Mm -hmm. And we went to the bookstore and got this CD set and we decided we were going to make a whole weekend out of it. And we were going to listen to these teachings and we were going to evolve and it was going to be great. And I tell you what, Laura, these people were saying stuff in this CD that just, messed me up. I, they were saying things like, don't help someone on the street that needs help because you're going to cause them to not learn the lesson that they're here to learn. Mm -hmm. And you're going to interrupt them on evolutionary path. Plus you're going to catch negativity. Mm -hmm. What's that? You'll mess with their karma that they're trying to work out. Yeah, exactly. And Sean and I are like, what? You know, and they're like, you're going to catch their negativity. And I'm like, well, that's garbage, you know? And then I remember distinctly the sound of the voice of this lady. She said, there is no God waiting to judge you. And I was just like, "Mm, maybe there is. It just didn't sound right to me. And that's when I really began to wonder what I had gotten into. Yeah, it's so. like may- maybe there is, you know, and that that's what I kind of feel as well. When so many folks say believers are, are the ones that are wrong and we are low in the evolutionary ladder, et cetera, et cetera. Um, well, if we were, then hey, we'll evolve one day then, won't we? But uh, if yeah. they're wrong and we're right, then my goodness, you know, there is a God and, and he loves us and it would be best for us to connect with him. Absolutely. Yeah. If we're wrong, what have we lost? Yeah. 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 If that's wrong, well, (laughs) yeah. Serious. So yeah, that, that bothered me, Mm -hmm. Laura. And I really started to question 
where I was at. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, like I said before, life goes on, you know, you go to work, you come home, you got to eat, you got to do all these things. Mm -hmm. And it was just part of the big picture. So fast forward again, a few months, first thing in the morning, this was a, a big moment of the turnaround. Sean wakes up all startled and looks at me and he says, the bridegroom is coming. Mm -hmm. And I said, what's a bridegroom? <laughs> like, mm -hmm. I don't know what you're talking about, man. <laughs> and he just yep. kind of looked at me and blinked and shook his head. And he was like, nothing, forget it. And I'm like, okay, you're mm -hmm. crazy. You know, I thought maybe he had a weird dream or something. Yeah. And that was the beginning of the turnaround for Sean, but I didn't know it. Mm -hmm. He he went out and bought a Bible, but he didn't tell me. I had no idea. He started reading the Bible. Mm -hmm. And what he did show me is he went to the used bookstore and bought a book of Psalms and started reading them to me, mm -hmm. which was not unusual for him. He always used to read me poetry in those years. And so it was just part of that to yeah, me. Yeah. I had no idea that he had had some weird awakening. Mm -hmm. And it was a few months later that something happened to me. Um, I was running errands. I was at the grocery store and I heard my name and I turned around and there was no one there. And I was like, hmm, that's weird. I thought maybe someone in the next aisle was named Rachel or something. Mm -hmm. So then I went to the gas station and I'm pumping gas and I heard Rachel and I'm looking around and there's nobody there. And I'm like, okay, this is getting kind of weird. Well, then I went to a different store where I would buy my rice milk and I'm bending down to get my rice milk and I hear Rachel and I stood straight up and looked around. There's no one in the aisle. And I said out loud, I said, who is messing with me? Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I knew spirits were real. So I thought someone was just like playing games with me. Mm -hmm. And um, that was it. Nothing else happened. And then it was a couple months later. Um, it, it, it happened. Uh, my husband was looking at the news one morning, the Gulf of Mexico oil spill had happened. And there were uh, pictures of animals covered in oil on the news. And he showed it to me. And I wanted to go help. Yeah. So he told me to look online that day after he left for work and see if there was a bus trip or something mm -hmm. where I could go help. Mm -hmm. So he left for work and I'm online looking. And um, it was weird because there were, there were no bus trips. They were arresting people for trying to get close and see what was going on. Mm -hmm. So I went down this three week long rabbit hole that culminated in my big experience. Um, it was July 14th, 2010. And I had been reading all about this and other things and um, basically environmental stuff that was going on. And mm -hmm. I read that they had cracked the ocean floor with this oil spill and that all this methane was coming up and it was going to explode. We were all going to die. Mm -hmm. I'm like, well, what is this? The end of the world? And then it just hit me mm -hmm. that as a little girl, I always thought I was going to see the end of the world. Mm -hmm. And I remembered that. And I was like, oh. And I just sat back. I said, well, the end of the world, where's God? Mm -hmm. And then Bam, it just, it happened, Laura. All of a sudden, it was crazy. It was the most unusual, crazy thing I have ever experienced in my life. Um, all of a sudden, it was like, I just felt this, this like energy hit me. And I saw the whole history of my life, like in my brain, just for a second, it was all like right there, just, mm. and then I saw the whole history of the world just for one second. It was just right in the forefront of my mind just for one uh -huh. second. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And then I saw a Bible <gasps> and I was like, oh. and I just knew all of a sudden I just knew, I knew it was true. I knew it was true. Mm -hmm. And that what I had been raised with was absolute truth. And I looked around and I'm like, well, what is all this? You know, I've got hundreds of magic books and crystals and a copper pyramid. I'm like, what is all this? Mm -hmm. And I went to my bookshelf and I pulled down my Reiki textbook and just opened it up. And the first page with anything written on it was three quotes from people. And the first quote was from Alice Bailey. 
she's like this famous Luciferian. And I was like, sure, sure. oh, no. And I threw the book on the floor and I stomped on it and I started just crying. I just knew. Mm-hmm. And I was praying and I was thanking God for showing me and telling him I was so sorry and realizing that I had basically been worshiping the devil without even realizing. I mean, they don't tell you, they didn't tell me. I mean, they talk about love and light and healing. They don't, they told me Jesus did Reiki. I mean, they didn't tell me. I don't think they did. Most of them are deceived too. Oh, absolutely. They don't know such lovely, lovely people. Yes. And I was just, horrified. Mm -hmm. So my husband came home from work and I'm bawling. I'm just crying and crying. And I said, we got to get rid of all this stuff. And he, I expected him to be shocked. And he's Mm -hmm. like, well, what happened? And I told him and he said, well, I have something to tell you. He said, do you remember when I woke up and told you the bridegroom is coming? Mm -hmm. I said, yes. And he said, the bridegroom is Jesus. And I woke up that morning and knew, I just knew that we were on the wrong path, that Jesus is God. Mm. And I thought, well, she's never going to believe this if I tell her. Mm -hmm. So I prayed, if this is really you, come for her too. And that was it. I started crying all over again. It was like Mm. absolute confirmation of what had just happened to me. And... And that's when it all began. We got rid of everything and bought Bibles. And I read it from cover to cover. And it confirmed Mm -hmm. everything that had been placed in my heart that day and Mm -hmm. in my mind. And, you know, Laura, I went to my parents and my my family and said, it's the end of the world. And Jesus, Lord. And they're like, uh, Uh you're insane. (laughs) (laughs) But that's another story. So. Yeah. Um, it was, it, it, I was completely changed mm-hmm. and I saw everything completely differently and it all happened in one instant mm-hmm. and the way it happened. I mean, I couldn't deny that it was real. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden I just saw everything completely differently. It's not because I read a book or because someone influenced me or, whatever i mean it came like a lightning bolt yeah, out of the sky completely a revelation from god himself from god himself mm-hmm. and i think that's what it was going to take because i had experienced such a powerful delusion i mean i thought i had already found god mm-hmm. because reiki saved me yeah. from the life i had lived before and cured my alcoholism and everything else so to be convinced that something else was God, especially silly old Christianity. I mean, mm-hmm. it was going to take God himself touching me. And yeah, that's because exactly. Because you probably and... felt Christianity was the very last thing you would go to because I felt that way. Um, yeah. Too. Yeah. And also when things are so powerful and you do get healed from things, you just assume it's good. But, you know, now, yes. we, now we know they're very evil. Um, for example, you know, Satanism, voodoo, whatever, witch doctors that do really evil things. They can cure people, they can heal people, but the source is is from Satan, not not from God. Absolutely. You know, it's like the the man in the van with the candy for the little girl. The candy looks good. Mm-hmm. Candy's not bad. Candy's a nice treat. You know, what could be wrong with candy? But mm-hmm. don't take the candy, <laughs> you know. I mean, yeah, it was it was just a big trick. And I, I see now. Mm-hmm that the Lord always had his hand on me, you know, all through those years of my terrible life, I should have been killed. I should have been raped. I should have been murdered. Mm -hmm. I should have many fatal diseases by now. Everything that I did uh, in those years, I see now that the Lord had his hand on me and he let me go where I wanted to go to get it out of my system. But he protected me all those years from potentially, you know, losing my soul. And I think he used Reiki as part of my journey back to him. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's it's all about him. And it's just amazing because 
the difference I have now of a relationship with Jesus Mm -hmm. does make superficial Christianity seem very shallow. And I'm a Christian. Yeah, totally. It makes it seem just absolutely disgusting. I mean, (laughs) yeah, following an empty religion and just Mm -hmm. living how you want to in the meantime and all these people that everyone would call hypocrites. I mean, Mm -hmm. I don't have anything in common with them. It is a relationship Mm -hmm. with Jesus. So yeah, I'm here to say as someone that's been through the whole gambit of the spiritual world that he is real (laughs) for sure. And And you know, some people might say, what do you mean, you know, Reiki, God used that to turn you to him. But I've heard that too from people who have been in really, really dark, dark occult stuff that it was so, so dark and and say it was, you know, even following Satan, believing Satan to be who he is, the evil Satan, doing all sorts of evil stuff. And yet because of that, they actually began to see that Jesus was real and they actually came and, you know, came to Jesus. So um, not that God wanted us to go into those things, but whilst we're in those things, he can certainly show us Jesus is real and and is um is the way out. T- tell yes. us now we we have um only about five minutes left. Tell us about your obviously you had lots of new age and occult books and crystals what have you. Tell us did you did you feel to throw them out straight away or or um absolutely you know I could not wait to get this stuff out of my house. Mm-hmm. I saw it as absolute garbage and I uh, I couldn't wait um. My inclination was to take it all outside and set it on fire, (laughs) but, um, we, we ended up loading everything into the car and just taking it, uh, to the used bookstore who bought it all off of us. Mm -hmm. I gave all my crystals to my family. Um, I, I'm thinking I threw some of them out in the woods, like uh, the stuff just got all dispersed out of our home Mm -hmm. and, um, I, you know, I've recently run across a few things that survived somehow, like a couple rocks here and there, mm-hmm. but now I just see them for what they are and it, it didn't bother me. I didn't like go, oh, it's a tool of the devil. I got to get rid of it. You know what I mean? I think a lot of it is what we put into it. Now they're just rocks, Do you, you know? know? I actually burnt all my stuff um, and I've heard of people who've been miraculously healed when they've actually burned this stuff, it's, I guess that's why the Bible says to do it because it does break all the curses and that related with it. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I suppose I could go to the bookstore and take a lighter with me. No, (laughs) (laughs) but yeah, that's, that's basically it. So, and then uh, obviously I, I imagine those spirit guides and those Reiki guides and all the spirits, disappeared stopped talking to you and again that's just confirmation jesus is real isn't it absolutely yes they were gone Mm -hmm. um and you know other than you know normal trials that we have growing spiritually as a christian Mm -hmm. um i don't feel as though i've been demonically oppressed in any way um i think that they have to flee at the name of jesus and when jesus is in your home you know Mm -hmm. And you had such yeah. a you had such a dramatic revelation of Jesus, and so did your husband. And I find often when 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 people's conversions are so dramatic that there isn't quite the the battle to get free of the demons in the very beginning. That sometimes they just seem to all go automatically, as it were. Um, sure. It sounds like that's possibly what 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 happened with yourself. So we've got I about, believe so. Yeah, we've got about two minutes left. Could you tell the listeners, people might want to hear um, your testimony. You have a summarized version on your YouTube channel. Can you tell them where to find it? Yes, you can find me on YouTube. Um, I just uh, named my channel Sean and Rachel Kelly. It's S-H-A-W-N and Rachel, Mm -hmm. R-A-C-H-E-L-K-E-L-L-Y. I have a very shortened version of my testimony on YouTube. And then um, we'll obviously upload the recording of this conversation um, when that becomes available. Mm -hmm. So people can look for that as well. If they want to listen to it again, listen to certain details or to even share with someone that they may know Mm -hmm. that um, could benefit. And if people want to contact you, they can find you there or your Facebook page, I imagine. 
Um, yeah, they can find me on Facebook. Uh, I'm also Sean and Rachel Kelly there. I'm in Fort Wayne, Indiana. That can help you find me there as well. Mm-hmm. Um, if you, for whatever reason, have trouble finding me there, um, I have a jewelry store where I make jewelry on Etsy. I'm Clay Girl RK. Mm-hmm. Um, or I imagine people could always contact you, Laura. Um, if, if they had questions for me, I'm just a person that lived the story that I've told. And I would welcome anyone calling me, getting a hold of me for questions, prayer requests, um, further explanations, or just to, um, just to talk. I'm awesome. a good listener as well. So awesome, Rachel. Well, it's been so wonderful having you on the show. Could you please end the show praying with the listeners, just however you feel led to? Absolutely. And thank you, Laura, for having me on today. It's been Um, lovely, lovely speaking with you, sister. Thank you. Well, praise you, Lord, for uh, Laura. Bless her ministry, Father. Um, Help draw people to her that need to hear. They need to hear the truth. Um, People that, that are in the same situation that we were in, Lord, we tell the story because it happened to us. And Thank you so much for coming for me and Laura. Thank you for sending Jesus and for allowing him to live in our hearts and give us boldness and the knowledge and the truth to tell these stories and the experience. I ask, Lord, that you bless all the people that have heard this today. You strengthen the beliefs of your believers and you strengthen the, the hearts and the souls of those that already do believe in you and follow you. And I ask, Lord, that you use this testimony today to rescue someone that is trapped, that is trapped in the same type of stuff that we've been through, whether it be through habits and addictions or is somewhere trapped in that new age world where they've got that burden of trying to evolve spiritually and just can't get to the next step. I ask that you give a revelation, a powerful revelation of truth to the listeners today, Lord, and that you give the strength and courage to someone if they are wanting to contact me uh, for questions and are afraid to. And I ask that you continue to lead people to Laura, lead Laura to people that can give you glory and spread the truth of your name. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father. Amen. Bless you, sister. Bless you, Laura. Thank you so much. Bye-bye for now. Bye-bye. The preceding program was made possible by kind donations from the listeners to Eternal Radio, for which we are very grateful. It takes a great deal of time and resources to prepare, produce, record, and broadcast our programs to listeners in over 60 countries around the world. Our potential audience is much larger, and Eternal Radio can now be heard all around the world, online, on tablet, on smartphone, and on TV. If you would like to help us continue broadcasting sounds to energize your faith, together with the message of God's love for all mankind around the world, please prayerfully consider making a donation. From your mobile phone, simply text ELCM02, followed by your donation preference of £3, £5 or £10 to 70070. Thank you for listening.